Hi, this is Dan from Much Waker Appliance Repairs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take apart and clean out the soap scum from your Fisher & Paykel Smart Drive washing machine. The first part of this video is the same as the first part of my video on how to clear out the drain pump. So if you've already got your machine apart to that stage, you can skip ahead. Otherwise, for the rest of you, we'll take you through step by step. All right, so the first thing to do is unplug the power. We are unplugged and lift the lid off. Lid just lifts off. As I mentioned in the last video, there is a couple of little slots there and grooves there. And to go back on, it just slots back on like that. So we get that lid out of the way. Uh, we need to take this agitator out. There's a nut down the middle. It could be a nut or it could be a bolt, depending on which model you've got. And that lifts straight off. Now we're going to get a screwdriver and just pop these two bungs off here. A flat blade and then a Phillips screw undoes the screws here and here. Now the top deck on these washing machines is held off two screws there and there are a couple little pegs that sit in the back. I was going to take a photo of that for you. You can actually get a screwdriver into those, prise them off and lift this top deck up. We don't want to do that because uh, there's actually a wiring harness all there which is quite a, you know, it takes a little bit to disconnect and it's going to be a waste of time. So we're just actually going to lift this up and pivot it on those rear pins. Usually I'd slide the machine back a bit so this could just lean back against the wall. Uh, where I've got it set now for the video kind of prevents that. Right, so now we need to take this neck ring off. There are little clips on the side all the way around. And so we're just popping that off like that and working our way around. When this is cold, it can be hell on your fingers. Now I don't worry about disconnecting the spring here. Just lift this off and pop it over the side like that. Now if you don't have that spring, this little red clip can come off um, and the spring will probably just be hanging on that suspension rod and just fall down the side. What I would usually do in that situation, you replace that clip or if you haven't got a clip, you can just draw a small hole and just thread that spring through and bend it around on itself so that it holds on there. That's a bias spring. What it does is it biases the bowl and instead of sitting directly centre, it's going to move slightly over this way, which is away from the out of balance lever in this corner, which is actually snapped off. It should be about that long, so we need to fix that. Um, and it's also used on the machines that don't actually have uh, out of balance levers, so that's quite important. Now this here, you'll see there's some screws and stuff inside there, we don't need to touch anything else. This here just lifts straight out now. This can be a little difficult because it's sliding up on the shaft. Oh, this is easy. If you've had it soaking full of water, that will come out quite easy. Um, but because it slides on the shaft, see all the grease and stuff I talk about cleaning up, uh, with a reasonably tight fit between the and the shaft, it can be quite difficult to get off. Usually the process in that situation is to be nice and nimble. You step on that shaft because otherwise you're just lifting and there's no weight and you can lift it up. You might find it gets part way up and gets stuck. You can work it down, up, down, up, down. This one's nice and easy to come right off. Um, but you know, lime scale will so build up on that shaft will stop it. Um, and so we've got that off there. You can pour water down the centre uh, or a you don't want to put too many in the way of chemicals or cleaners in there, um, like brake cleaners and like that to try and loosen them up because they'll just go into the water. But a bit of water will soften up the soap scum amazingly. So the process is just, what I usually do is I'll fill it up with a bit more water and then we're going to just hit it with a scrubbing brush. I might do that because this is still a little bit dry. So now, you probably don't want to use this brush on the dishes after you've done this, especially after you've done the inner, inner bowl.
the stuff that's hard around the top, we're just going to get water on it, let it soak in a bit. It's got a ceramic scraper blade. You can get some mitre tin on the white. Lovely. Going to do the bowl outside in a bowl. Uh, then we're going to put it back together, fill it up with a bit of water, drain it all out, this gunk out. Then we're going to fill all the way to high and drain that out again, or put it through the last stage of a rinse because you don't want to have the rest of this coming through into your washing. To clean the inner bowl, we're going to use the same scrubbing brush. I don't use a cloth because these holes you can see here have been punched through from inside the bowl and they leave sharp edges, which are like a cheese grater and you'll take the skin off your knuckles very quickly if you're just holding a cloth. The same as the outer bowl, the soap scum becomes quite soft once it's wet. If you have lime scale in your area, it may be a bit harder to get off. For soap scum though, I just get it wet with a hose on low flow so you don't splash yourself. Leave it for a minute or two and then come back with the hose on low again and start scrubbing while keeping the water flowing. It takes a few seconds of working on each section and you'll start to see it moving off quite easily. If there's anything that's really stubborn on there, I don't worry about that too much. If it's not going to come off with some scrubbing and water, then it's not going to come off during the wash and get onto your washing. It's just going to stay there. Now the secret to getting it really shiny, like you see in the photos here, is to use a water blaster. So that's what I do based in the workshop. Um, just water blaster and it comes up beautifully. Otherwise, yeah, scrubbing brush does fine on the road. Alright, so now we're ready to go back together. We've loosened up that dust and stuff there. Uh, dirt there, we've cleaned out the inner bowl. And it's just a case of reassembling in reverse order. Bring it down. So you notice there's a little green um, so that's your touch line here. We don't need to take that off, that just slides right off. Next is this neck ring. If you have ended up taking the spring off, you want to know what way around it goes. You have a little knot which is different from the rest for the spring. That's in the left front corner. Agitator slides down on the spline. Agitator nut or bolt, depending on which model you've got. From there, that's all done, springs on there. This sits down, you might just need to push those clips at the back to clip them in properly. Screw. Get that one in straight. Lid, we just need to make sure those are both pointing up. So now what we need to do, we've got that dirt we stirred up. We need to plug it in, drain it out a bit, fill it up to the high water level and then drain it out again and it should be all ready to go.